Hey guys, it's Bambi TV. Guys, today we're going to be reacting to Funny Command in the Bible by Ahmed G. Dot. Guys, let's go straight into this. Fresh examples of what I was talking about yesterday. You see, Dr. Shorosh in the debate, he mentioned one of the stup st most stupendous feet of Hazrat Isa al -Islam, Jesus. And he quoted from John, Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, verse 13. He quoted, he says, no man has ascended into heaven. No man has ascended into heaven except the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? Jesus. Except the Son of Man who descended from heaven, who is in heaven. That's John chapter 3 verse 13. He quoted that. No man has gone up except Jesus. But the man hadn't gone up when this thing was written. It, it hasn't happened. The, the ascension had not happened. And the man is talking that no man has ascended into heaven except the Son of Man, Jesus, who descended from heaven. Did he descend from heaven? Luke tells us that when he was eight days old, Luke tells us, when he was eight days old, he was circumcised and named Jesus by the angel when he was in his mother's womb. So where did he come out from? From his mother's womb. He said he descended from heaven. Who saw him coming down? The nurses and whoever were helping Mary in the stable, they saw this Jesus, this puny little child with all the filth and the muck, which made his mother impure for 40 days according to Jewish law, coming out of his mother's womb. Now they said, no, he descended from heaven. Who is in heaven? And who is in heaven? But the man was on earth and he's having a rough time with the Jews. He's in hell. The Jews are giving hells to him and he said, and he is in heaven. So in the next, you remember the five major revisions? In the sixth major revision, the words who is in heaven is now eliminated. In the revised standard version, who is in heaven is taken out. Because they know that's not fitting. The man is here on earth and says, who is in heaven? What heaven? This hell that you are in. Is that your heaven? The book gives you devilish advice. The Bible, if it's the word of God, listen to what it says. It says, give strong drink, hard liquor, strong drink, hard liquor, to him who is perishing. Anybody who is about to die, any nation is about to perish, what you do, give them strong drink, give them hard liquor. Open your book, open the Bible, and if you have it, check it up. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verses 6 and 7. Proverbs, chapter 31, verses 6 and 7. Open your Bibles and see the advice given, this devilish advice given by God. That if a people are dying, like the Abor aboriginals of Australia, the white man has been... Guys, this is actually funny. Like, I kind of hate when I see this because... When I reply to it, I kind of get a lot of hate comments in my, in my videos. I, it's kind of demotivating to actually make more Muslim videos. That's why I actually went back to my music. But like, I'll have to say it. He said, the Bible said, give strong days to him who is ready to perish. Like, if you want to perish, then take it. Like, take it if you want to perish. Not, like, I, I don't know how he's trying to translate it in another way, but this is not the way... It is like I, I have to be honest, this is not the way it is. Like I just can't lie, like give strong drink to him who is ready to perish. He's telling you that if you want to perish, you take strong drink. And I don't know why he's trying to translate it this way. But the John that I don't know of, so I can't really say what I don't know of. I understand that Jesus actually ascended to heaven, but I don't know of him descending. So I really can't speak on what I don't know of. So let us continue with us. Give him drink. The Red Indians, you go to America, you go to Canada, see what is the, the fate of these people. Drink, drink, drink. In Africa, drink, alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. The first freedom that my country gave to the black people was what they call the bottle franchise. You can buy bottle now. Bottle franchise was the first franchise that we ever received in South Africa was the bottle. 
give him drink. You want to make a nation to perish? You want to destroy a people? Give him strong drink, says the Holy Bible. Let him drink and forget his poverty. Yes, forget his sorrow and remember his misery no more. That's the advice. God gives you that advice. And I have been seeing, you know, as a boy, I used to go and see a lot of his cars. Guys, yeah, this is really fun because it's actually stupid per se, like I must say, because you can't just pick out a verse and you, the, to be honest, like you're saying, you are picking a verse out of the Quran. It does not make sense. You have to read it as a contest. But him picking up just a verse, like you, you don't know why he said it or what happened, what he said after. Like he just picking up a verse. And a lot of people are going to read this and just say, the Bible is called. Like just go and read Proverbs. Like Proverbs is one of, is the Bible verse I know I've read like four times. Like, the chapter i read the chapter like four times and it's something i know that as it changes you like i dare you just read it and ah guys let's continue but this is actually fun because it's it's not fun because i can just see him saying things that is there i understand it's there but it's it's like you bending the truth like i'll say that like he's he's trying to bend the truth because you just can't see this and not complete it. Like, let's go back. Oh boy, films. And when the guy is dying, I see that they give him a tot. They give him a drink. And then, then the guy goes off peacefully. The man is dying, they give him drink. The man is dying, they give him drink. I said, where did you get this idea from? A man who's dying, if the Muslims, they give them honey in water. You know that? Easy digestible, give you quick energy. The man is on the, on the throes of death. You give him hard drink, strong drink, hard liquor. No, that's what the Bible says. Give him hard drink. So they give hard drink. A man is dying, give him hard drink. The nation is perishing, give him hard drink, hard liquor. I don't know how Shorosh forgot. You see, in the previous debate, he was quoting from the book of Peter, Second Peter verses 1. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21 and Jimmy Swaggart also amazing they are all the evangelists are quoting the same verses in America Jimmy Swaggart if you see the tape he's quoting that verse and you see the tape of the Shorosh he's quoting the same verse the verse I don't know he forgot yesterday because it's too many written things to read out it says here For the prophecy came not, prophecy telling you things that is going to happen in the future, came not by the will of man, by the impulse of man, by the whims and fancies of man, no, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. As the Holy Ghost moved them, tickled them, they wrote what they were told to write. And so the whole Bible is from God because the Holy Ghost tickled these writers to write what they wrote. But the Bible, get this word of God or not. On that human level we were talking, sane, sober people, I want your judgment. Does God Almighty command his emissary, his prophets, to do shameful things? Will he? And he has it recorded in his book. This is the prince of the prophets, prince of the prophets, according to Shorosh. Isaiah, he calls him Prince of the Prophets. His book, the book of Isaiah, he calls it the fifth gospel. If there are four gospels in the New Testament, this you can be added and make it the fifth gospel, according to Shorosh. This Prince of the Prophets, this is what God does to him. At the same time, speak the Lord to Isaiah. God spoke to Isaiah, the son of Amos, saying, Go and lose the sackcloth from thy loins. You know the sackcloth that you're tying? Untie that and put thy, off thy shoes from thy foot and he did so walking naked and barefoot a prophet of god for three years he's walking up and down the streets of jerusalem or wherever he was absolutely naked not even a g-string can you imagine god giving such instructions to his prophet his emissary 
go out walk, and three years in front of his mother, in front of his daughters, sisters, everybody. He is walking a prophet of God, one of the mightiest of the prophets of the Bible. He is walking naked for three years. And the Lord said, like as my servant Isaiah had walked naked and barefoot three years, so you also were going to make you to do the same. Allah Bari Ta'ala tells in the Quran, he says that he does not. He says, Kul, tell them, Inna Allah la ya'muru bil fasha. Allah does not command any shameful deed. Atakuluna ala Allahi ma la ta'lamun. You say about Allah what you don't know. In ignorance, God Almighty telling his prophets to go walk about naked. <laughs> and speaking language like this, God talking, say, Behold, I will corrupt your seed. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 3. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces. You know what's dung? You know what's dung? Yes, excreta. Yes, God Almighty is going to spread dung on your faces. Even the dung of your solemn feast. And one shall take you away with it. Malachi 2, 3. And thou shalt eat it, telling another prophet of his, another prophet of God, Ezekiel. God tells him, chapter 4, verse 12 of Ezekiel, he says, And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes. What? And thou shalt bake it with dung that come out, out of man in their sight. What you see, fresh dung, fresh excreta with barley cakes. You shall eat it. This is, the, this is God Almighty telling his prophet to, to eat barley cakes with and fresh dung too, fresh. It must be fresh, not that stale, dried up thing, you know, that you can burn like goat, goat, this thing. God Almighty. He is not like Shylock. You know Shylock? Shakespeare made him famous, Shylock. He wanted that Christian pound of flesh. He entered into a contract, an agreement with this Christian. He lent him some money. He said, look, by a certain date, if you don't pay, I'll, I'll take one pound of flesh. Shakespeare made Shylock famous. He made the Jews famous. Shakespeare, William Shakespeare. When the contract was broken, he is demanding for one pound of flesh. That's all. He said, I want one. They're according to contract. But God Almighty, he is not satisfied with one for one. <laughs> In the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 5, he says, for I am the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. You make a sin, I am going to visit their sins and punish them to third and fourth generation out of those who hate me. And he's going to punish you seven times over for whatever you do. And after all, Leviticus chapter 26, verses 18, 23, 24, 28. And after all this, if you do not obey me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. If you, you didn't do your homework, my son, so you're supposed to get one cut, one lash. But no, no, no. This headmaster of yours will give you seven cuts. Everybody's supposed to get one cut for not doing homework, you will get seven cuts. And if by these things you are not reformed by me, but walk contrary to me, then also will walk contrary to you, and I will punish you yet seven times for your sins, seven times. Then I also again, then I also will walk contrary to you in fury and I even I will chastise you seven times for your sins. Allah tells us in the Quran, this is what he says, Allah will not do the least bit of injustice to you. He says, Jaa bil hasanati minha. If you do a good deed, he will reward you better than your deed. You do one good deed, Allah says, He'll reward you better than your deed. He can reward you a million fold for every deed of yours, good deed of yours. Woman ja'a bi sayyati, but if you do anything evil, فَلَا يُزَّلْ لَزِينَ عَمِلُ سَيَّاتِ إِلَّا مَا كَانُوا مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And the doers of evil are only punished to the extent of their deeds. Whatever you deserve, you get. You do good, Allah can reward you a million fold. You do evil, to the extent of what you have done, you will be punished. The God of the Bible says, seven times over. And I'm going to visit the sins of the fathers into the third and fourth generation, taking revenge. God Almighty, He deceives. Says the Bible. He deceives. He, deceives. he says He deceives. Or oh, the prophet is crying out. Jeremiah the prophet, he says. Jeremiah. 
Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, verse 7, he says, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, you deceived me, and I was deceived. God, you deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and have prevailed. What can I do? I'm helpless. If you want to deceive me, how can I resist deception? You are stronger than I, and have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. Oh Lord, you deceive me. You are a deceiver. God is a deceiver. Allah tells you in the Quran that He guides, He does not misguide. And on and on. There's so much. There's so much. Wallah, there's so much. I can keep you here further for hours, but that is not my. Guys, this is actually very funny because him saying God is a deceiver, you guys clearly see that it was the prophet that actually said, God, you deceived me and I was deceived. He was crying out for help and I don't know about a passage, but a lot of you can say, I don't know where it is. Chill, chill, just chill out. Like, if you read, if what, based on what he read, he says the guy, the prophet was crying out for help. Does not mean God deceived him. He said God deceived him, but does not mean God himself deceived him. It's like someone so, like, you crying and looking for whom to put your blame on, and he decided to put the blame on God. But I don't know, based, I don't really know about that passage, except I read it then, I can give a brother on like a brother answer to it but him saying god's gonna punish you seven times your your sins and he said god is going to he has punished you to your fourth generation yes god actually said that and it was actually written in the bible and if you read very well that is why it is a feast like from there God actually forgive and we have grace. Jesus died for our sins and yeah, see, you cannot understand the Bible by reading the Old Testament, jumping to the New Testament, going back to the Old Testament. Like it's stupid. Like when you read the Old Testament, there's a big I think there's a big gap between the Old and the New Testament. Yes. The Old Testament we had to pay for our sins by ourselves. We have to sacrifice goods, lamb. And stop to pay for sin. But the New Testament is when Jesus coming and Jesus died for sin and Jesus paid for our sin. So you saying that you trying to interpret the Bible based on what the Old Testament say and what the New Testament say, it's just stupid because you are trying to miss both of them together, it does not make sense. And if you read clearly, like if you read about when Jesus said when God said he's gonna punish. To the first generation, just read the verse, not just picking out because Jesus, God said He's going to punish the first generation. The Bible is saying God said He's going to punish the first generation. Why are we going to punish for? Why are we going to punish people that did not do anything? Like it doesn't make sense. You have to understand where that passage is coming from, what happened, and why God said He's going to punish to the first generation. Like I feel you cannot just understand the Bible. Like I feel this thing is very, very wrong and disrespectful, to be honest. But like you can't just say this kind of thing for a lot of people who are ignorant and who will not go back and check. Because a lot of people who were actually present here, I'm pretty sure they will not go back and check and read the verse. They won't. Like if we want to be honest with ourselves, it won't happen. And I'm clearly sure that a lot of people are going to hate me on this video, but I have to express myself. Like I really can't say things that. I know is against my faith and Satan that I know is wrong because if I think I've made it very very clear on my channel when I see Christian in certain Islamic religion, I always make it clear that this is wrong. And when I see another person trying to disrespect my religion, I always make it clear too because I believe you have to understand someone's faith for you to actually explain something to them. And for me, I'm, that's why I'm trying to understand Islam. I think I have a good understanding on it, but not not that good because I don't understand Arabic. But I think I understand key things like why people practice some certain things, why people don't celebrate birthdays, why people don't eat pork, like some things, why people celebrate is it Hajj? I don't know. 
but like, I'm trying to learn and me seems kind of seems kind of discouraging to be honest but it's kind of like he's trying to mock the religion and it's actually very stupid that's why I said I love him to someone like Mufti Mek because he's someone that actually talks about Islam without attacking Christianity he just focuses on his religion and tell you why he think you should join his religion without mocking another person's religion or or picking out a contest and explaining that contest like picking out a verse and explaining it to make it look bad or something but i i to be honest that was i feel uh i mean that was doing here yeah. picking out the verse and making it look bad because to be honest that what he was doing but if you read the context of the verse it isn't the way he's trying to portray it to be okay i think this is messing with my emotions so Guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel, and leave your comment in my comment section. I really want to read your thoughts on this particular video. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.